coming right there. Oh, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. I'm going to get into today about survival food storage. I brought a subject matter ex expert in here, Donnie. Donnie is the man. However, before I do that, I want to give a shout out to some of our sponsors. You guys know the deal. You enjoy these free videos. I right? understand most of my stuff gets demonetized here on YouTube. So my sponsors, I just want to thank them for their support because I can't do this without their help. All right, so guys, like I said, I'm here with uh, Donnie. He is the Minister of Propaganda for Angry American International. That's right. Uh, Donnie, thank you for coming out, thank brother. Thank you, brother, for Dude, having me. Man, Honored. Honored. This is a great American right here. And everybody's got their strong suits and everything. He's concealed carry instructor, a bunch of other mm -hmm. stuff. Um, what we're gonna talk about today, though, is uh, food storage for long-term storage. Correct. I, I, a lot of people, you know, because everybody, we've, we've had this big pandemic that just threw everybody over the edge in the, the dumpster fire that we called 2020. And the only thing people stocked up on was toilet paper. <laughs> All right. Breathe in, breathe out. Understand COVID-19 was not the plague. All right. However, rather than just saying it was a scam, accept it for what it was. And let's think of it as a rehearsal. Right, so you realize things that your family missed out on. All right, let's not make the same mistake. Let's prepare for the future. Because guys, there are storm clouds on the horizon without a doubt. How soon? Month, three months, three years, doesn't matter. The storm's eventually gonna come. But let's say, for example, it is five years down the road. Right. Me right. buying uh, tons of my favorite foods right now, mm -hmm. or all my wife's frozen pizzas and right. stuff, it's not, not going to help lie. you much. Not going to help unfortunately. me unfortunately. All right. So where and, we want to well, go? With and that's this. what that's what people did. So living in Florida, we have to have a maintain a certain level of preparedness because we have hurricanes mm -hmm. quite often. Yeah. And we had some bad ones in the last few years. And when those came, literally, we saw a microcosm of what's going to happen if there is truly a nationwide or regional crisis. Um, I remember going to the gas station, people fighting to get in the gas pumps to fuel their car up. I was just trying to top my last bit off from doing a little bit of running around. Um, it's crazy. And, yeah. and, and generators, people fighting over them, food, literally grocery stores. And I've got some pictures to show you of my local grocery store just cleaned out. Okay. Bottled water, Energy. which kind of silly. I mean, it's good to have. It's convenient. Yeah. Um, you know, food stores, cans. It's crazy. So comes COVID, and now we've got... It's kind of a blessing, to be honest with you, for those because we're those of us that are prepared. I had M95 mask. I had food. Mm -hmm. I had the, not only water, but the ability to purify water. I had the ability, if I lost electricity, to run the air conditioner in my home. Um, we just kind of sat back and laughed at it. I mean, mm -hmm. we really we had the mask for different reasons, not necessarily yeah. for that. But let's consider this a gift from God. Let's consider this a trial run. And now to, everybody's kind of seen it. The problem is we have short-term memories as Americans. 9-11, Amen. everybody yeah. was a Everybody's patriot. Already everybody wanted to join the yep. Rangers. Everybody wanted to do this. Like, anybody ever even talk about it anymore? No. I mean, I remember everybody being nice to each other. Well, mm -hmm. just saying that that crisis come, historically they've always come, and historically they will keep coming. So being pre prepared is just a smart move. I, the word prepper kind of... Um, make belittles everyone exactly it's it's it, it's just it's like you buy insurance it's preparedness so as people like i did in my own experiences get into preparedness um some of the things that people do is like i went out and i bought guns and we talked and about ammo. that the other night and, ammo. Ammo. and you know certainly that's a factor and that's important but the reality is in, unless it's apocalypse level crisis yeah, the you're ice not going to need yeah. ice yeah. storms i didn't yeah. use a whole lot of yeah. ammo yeah. guys yeah when the right. tornado wiped out the next neighborhood, I didn't use a whole lot of ammo. Uh, last hurricane that hit here, how much ammo did you burn? Up? I didn't burn any. Exactly. So, I mean, it, it's to have. It's, yeah. It's a block to check, but there are so many other things that are that much more important. It's, it's protective. It's yeah. protection. Um, the chances of you getting into a sustained firefight where you have to break out a, a carbine or, or the heavy <laughs> artillery. I mean, <laughs> the double basic this, load. I'm yeah. not saying it won't happen or can't happen. I'm saying usually a shotgun or a pistol will be all that you need. I mean, and I'm not in any, cause obviously that's what we do, um, pushing that to a different level, but that's just an, 
small part of it. But mm -hmm. to me, that was everything, being a gun guy. I was like, oh, I got to prepare. I actually had a dream, and, I, and, and, and I'm not really like a dream kind of guy, but in my dream, the world around me was on fire, and, and my family and my kids were screaming, and I was powerless to help them. And growing up in Kentucky and being a, a woodsman and, and a hunter and, and, a, and a shooter, you know, that was the first thing that I went for is, is to do that. And I'm in, in certain ways, I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. Got to meet, got into the training world and meet a lot of people. But as I progressed into it, I got really frantic about it. Like I, I had to do it. It was an emergency. I, I just needed to get done. So I'd go to this class and, and I was making really great money at the time. And I, I spent tens of thousands of dollars and tons of time learning skills and traveling. Then a friend of mine uh, that we talked about the other night, who's actually truly a survival skills instructor or was in Alaska and probably one of the smartest human beings I've ever met in my entire life pulled me back. He said, listen, you're more likely to die of a heart attack than die in a crisis. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you need to focus on what's really important. I said, well, right. What's important? Cause you know, he said food. He said, yeah. historically, basics, yeah. if you look back and, and I did, I started after he kind of set me straight and I relaxed a little bit and learned to love the bomb. Right. Yeah. And, and I started reading, he said, read history. You know, uh, what Stalin did to people, um, you know, every kind of crisis. And one common denominator really kind of kept circling back to me, and that was food. Mm -hmm. Because food is the hardest to get resource that there is. Without now, we live yeah. in a modern world where it's processed and we have giant farms and we're a grocery store away. And Americans, we've never really known hunger. Most of us have never known mm -hmm. hunger. So, you know, having a few MREs or a few things, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. You're not. Because... You eat, you eat every day and you eat a lot of food. So as I started looking at this, I started really realizing how important food was in this equation. Now, obviously, water is important. Shelter is important. Yeah. I mean, these are all obviously duh factor important, but mm -hmm. food is the most overlooked part of it. So then I started looking at getting food. And then and the the survival food market was just kind of, it was when that TV show, um, what was it, a Preppers? or American or, Prep. Amer or, yeah, um, the or something like that. Yeah, when the TV yeah. show came out and, you know, this and that. And so food um, started to become Doom, more and more popular. Doomsday, prepper. Doomsday Preppers. Yeah, Doomsday that was preppers. it. That was it. So I started looking at, at food and there's a bunch of companies um, selling freeze dried food. And the freeze dried food, you could buy cases of it. They had, you know, buy enough for one person for one year. And it was expensive. It was like $3,600 yeah. $3, yeah. for, for 15 meals. Mm -hmm. um, or buy a family of five for two years. And that was a ten thousand dollar investment, yeah. and then I started talking to different <laughs> people. I started eating it. I started trying it, and I was like, "Man, I might kill myself." Well, yeah, you're, same, not, you're not you're not going to want to eat that stuff. The same a amount month, of meals, right? Let alone a year. Talking to the military guys that that, that ate MRE, so I started really looking at things. And and my friend, who uh, the genius buddy of mine, who's a, the survival skills instructor, he had a system that he came up with, and he took me to his house after we got closer and showed me this room full of five gallon buckets. I mean, a bedroom in his house full. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And it was legumes, you know, all kinds of beans, yeah. uh, pastas, sugar, and, and the last Babylon important salt, yeah, salt, right? Salt and, and, and a whole lot of rice. And, and then he started explaining to me how you could store this food for pennies on the dollar. And there's a ton of different factors mm -hmm. that, 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 that go into that. I was like, wow, then, then, he showed me his system that we're going to show you and share that. And being the capitalist I am, I was, I, I was actually making some in my garage one day because you don't want a one off or two off this. We're going to do that tonight. But when you do this, you want to set up like a little bit. 10, 20 bucks. Yeah. You, yeah. You want to yeah. do it, make it worth your while. So I was in my garage doing a friend come by. He's like, man, can I just pay you to do that? And I went, ding. I'm like, capitalism. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, so we started a company now. You might laugh a little bit, but. At the time, the, the Walking Dead was at its peak. <laughs> I, I mean, Not, listen, yeah. listen. And zombies were always a metaphor for how people act. And actually a pretty accurate metaphor, yeah. if you think about it. And, I was, and so we started a company called Zombie Survival Products. And we were selling buckets of rice for like 80 bucks. <laughs> and, and we had a cool yellow, cool yellow bucket with like hazard tape on it. We had these cool labels. We also had shield survival products for yeah. people that didn't get it. But, and, and. So as I did that, I started um, meeting a bunch of LDS people, you know, the Mormons. Nobody knows how to store food like the Mormons. Yeah. The Mormons yeah. wrote the, literally wrote the book on it, calorie intake, how to store it, what to store. And I, I started really, I would go up, there's a Mormon supply 
place in Tampa. There's usually one in every major city yeah, or we've, two. Yeah, we've got one just north of uh, Nashville. Right, we, and they're Arlington. great yeah. people. Um, and they will help you, um, and they sell all the, the bulk goods and the ability to store it. So I started talking to them, worked with Terry, did some science and some studying, mm -hmm. and really thought about how crisis has progressed. And we really came up with a system to do that. So trying to profit from it wasn't, I mean, it's just not really worth the time. So I'd rather just share it with people. Yeah, of course. Because look, we're all Americans. We're all in this together right now. And this is important stuff. And I've got a lot of concerned citizens out there that I'm trying to make more capable. Absolutely. And I appreciate you helping us out. No, it's, it's an honor to do it. So, so as any crisis unfolds, there's a period of time. It's usually um, 72 hours to two weeks. And in that initial period of time, people are losing their minds. They're starting to realize there's no food. They don't have anything. The government's, nobody's going to come help you. Yeah. If, if there's a crisis, if they couldn't get into one city in New Orleans in Katrina, you think that if it's a regional or a statewide crisis or heaven yeah. forbid a national yeah. crisis, that nobody's gonna come help you. Nobody's gonna feed you. So in that time period, you're gonna be running around, you're gonna be probably, if you can, dri traveling, driving, locking, battening down the hatches, getting to wherever you might wanna go, yeah. pulling your family in close. So it's important to have what I consider this first phase type food. Um, and that first phase type food would be like an MRE or, or snacks or nuts or things like that. The MRE store, I think the storage life on MRE is what, six years? Yeah, then it's not, recommended. not like what people think they are. No, they don't they, you, last forever. No, they don't. You, you don't want to, I mean, maybe old, um, you know, old sea rations from World War II. Mm, it's, even uh, then, even then, yeah. So having some MREs and some freeze dried food in medium quantities is good to have because if you're in a crisis, you're scrambling, you're on the road, you're you're working, you're not gonna cook. The last you thing you're grab worried a about is cooking. bunch of MREs, they're you, ready MREs to MREs are ready to yep. go. They taste good, most of them anyways, and, and they, 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 they fill the hole. I mean, that's what they do, or if you need to travel out, and keep enough so if you do need to travel, you need to go out and do a recon, you need to go out and grab a family member. It's nice to have those. The second choice with that would have a little more would be the freeze-dried food like a mountain house or Alpine Air or Wise or, I mean, there's yeah. literally tons of companies. A lot of these popped up from Katrina. Yeah. I don't know if people know that. So Katrina happened when, uh, right about the time I started my business and the government was buying all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It was really, I placed a $10,000 order and had to wait like five months to get some Alpine wow. Air food. The problem with this stuff is it's limited. It tastes good. It'll fill the hole. It's got carbohydrates and a little bit. Of, it's some nutrition to it. Some are better than others. Yeah. 95% of the meat is not meat in this. It's a soy byproduct. Yeah. So you're not actually getting Bart's chili with, you know, meat. You're getting Bart's chili with, with tofu. I mean, it's, yeah. or a soy product to do that. Don't spend a ton of money in these because they're pricey. And they don't store. They, they A lot of these claims of storage are, are a little iffy. They're a little exaggerated. So and they I, require water. If well, you're well, traveling, right. you don't have water. Well, right. The MREs, yeah. the, 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 obviously, for it's designed for that particular yeah. reason. If you're in a cold hole, you can take it, warm it up, and eat it, and, and you're mm -hmm. good to go. These do require water, so that would be the second choice. I would say keep a few cases of these around because they're good to have in a situation. They're good comfort food. Um, you know, it, just don't go out and waste a ton of money on stuff like this because I'm telling you, you're going to kill yourself if you have to eat these things, um, and your body's going to going to thank you for not for not living on it. But it's good to have. The other type of food that's really popular are number 10 cans, and you can find a huge variety. They do store a long time in the proper environment because remember, it is in a metal can. And what does metal do? Yeah, deteriorates, metal, deteriorates uh, and rust. rust. So, so storing um, quite a bit of stuff in this, you can get nutrient dense things in, in number 10 cans. Like you can buy meat in them, you can buy different um, mm -hmm. fruits, you can buy different things that are sweet, have sugar, that are nutrient dense. And these will actually, in a cool, dry place, which you don't have without power in Florida, um, but if you're in Kentucky, um, in the Midwest, up north, you can usually have a basement and keep yeah. these relatively cool. I would say these are good for 10 years, maybe a little more depending on what's in it. What's in it super, super, super important. Um, anything that's oil-based. Um, these almonds, for example. For Yeah, any almonds or seasoning that's oil-based will actually go rancid peanut butter yeah. relatively quickly, no matter what you do to them. You freeze them, you do whatever. They will go bad after a, a, a short amount of time. And you'll open, and nothing's worse than opening up a, a, a bag or a can of rancid food. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind. Now, canning 
being from Kentucky, yeah. my mom can. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. My Aunt Helen. <coughs> Aunt Helen, yeah. Aunt Besides Helen. making great wine, <laughs> she, she's a canning fool, I'm sure. Yeah, but uh, tomatoes are the right. best. To, mm. But you can can meat. Mm -hmm. uh, you can can a multitude of things and seal it up. Again, a lot of that has to do with the environment that you keep the food in. I, I, I can't stress it enough. Um, another thing, um, if the hard, one of the harder things to store is protein, mm -hmm. animal proteins. So spam, and I know it's cliche, but there's there's certain spam that you can buy now. There's like 40 different varieties yeah. of it that will act, that actually has no expiration date on it. No believe it or not, no expiration date. And and a lot of the other spam may have a five or ten year expiration date. It's still good, way beyond that. In fact, they've opened yeah, spam the from the 40s. Date. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, in a metal can, how that can is stored. Um, people do it in different ways. They put them in bags. So as we get into this mylar bag storage system that we're going to do i'm going to talk about some other amazing fantastic uses for for, for storing stuff like ammo okay. and and hygiene products and things that that might you know okay. uh, other, otherwise go bad but number 10 cans spam it's cheap you can buy it by the case and it actually tastes pretty good in a crisis you know i'd rather have like a, you know a, some pasta with some spam and you know mixed in or, or, or something like that um, over one of these freeze-dried meals yeah but the real secret of the sauce of having enough food, and, and it takes a lot of food to drive engines. I know that the Mormons roughly say 24 to twix, used to say 24 to 2600 calories. That's not a ton of calories. No, I mean, not in a survival. It'll keep situation. you alive. Yeah. But you're 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 gonna Somali out. I mean, you're just you're just not. That's not enough. because yeah. you're stressed. You're sweating. You're working. You're working probably harder than most people ever will. Mm -hmm. um, so so that high caloric intake is super important. Looking at how the world eats. We eat a little bit different in America. Most of the world lives on beans and rice, mm -hmm. bottom line. Um, Meat once a day. If yeah. that, yeah. or fish, they get a yeah. lot of fish. So so there, there's a, a ratio, um, and, and I'm gonna focus on beans and I'm gonna focus on rice right now as, the, as a base. Yeah. The ratio of that is, um, is one part bean, three parts rice. Okay. And they call it a perfect protein, I'm not sure, really sure, but those mixed together um, will actually sustain you and you can live on that because you get the vegetable protein and do different kinds of beans, pinto beans, black beans, any kind of legume like like split peas, peas yeah. I, I love. Now, you store tons and tons and tons of rice. Uh, rice is really cheap. You can buy a 50 pound bag of rice now for just, just a few dollars, I mean. White rice versus white uh, rice. wild rice. Right, well, like, well. It would make sense to go with brown rice, well, but until it goes rancid. true, exactly, right. it goes yeah. rancid. It's yeah. white rice, it's treated, Right. But it's, it's actually uh, bleached. Won't go bad. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, bleached. A, it's not with bleed, but it's it's white rice will store. In fact, I've got one of the the pails that I stored ten years ago, and we're going to open it here we'll on camera. I haven't opened any of them in, in a long time, but I wanted to wait ten years to yeah. to, to open one. We'll take a look and see how awesome. it turned out. Now, this this bucket, along with my other buckets, have been stored in hot garages. They've been stored in in, in Chris's trailer. Chris is, yeah, literally the trailer. Literally the with a flap yard. over it, yeah. right. Um, you can bury them um, if you got the right bucket and the right yeah. system. You can put them in an attic. So they're they're less susceptible to humidity and heat because they're a sealed enclosure. Okay. So there's a lot, and, and, they, and they're stackable. Yeah. Which is cool. So there's different ways people store these types of food. Now, I store sugar. I store um, salt. Salt's very, very, very important mm -hmm. to have, and you know, for and there's different types of there's curing salt, there's 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 ionized salt like you use on table salt. So it's really, really super important to have salt stored because it, it's just hydrating, keeping yourself hydrated. Do you go that deep into storing the salt? I do. You do. I do. I, I usually way. I usually store, okay. and it's heavy, so just always put the salt on the bottom. Um, I store a lot of salt. Um, I store uh, flour. Okay. And and I store rice. I even store pasta. Now, pasta is a comfort food. That's the bottom yeah. line. But we're talking about mental, you know, well-being, yeah. right? In a crisis situation, four months into it, how in the hell good would a would a you know bowl of spaghetti be? Oh, be so yeah, much right, better you know what than I mean? right. the twelve thousand. Yeah. What are we eating tonight, Mom? Um, we're eating Bart's chill. No, we're eating spaghetti. Yeah. So now, with this base of food that you have, and and the and the LDS community does a lot of oats, um, you know, uncured oats yeah. and things like that, yeah. which are which are great if you like to do bread. So there's really no one particular kind of food you need to store. I would say focus on rice and beans because 
with that base, now you can take, um, for instance, I used to do experiments with my kids. I had an autistic stepson who would not eat anything um, and, and, and two girls. So I would experiment. I would open a can of Progresso soup and I would take and I would cook a couple cups of rice. and make, A couple cups of rice makes a lot of food. Yeah, it does really. And did you know you don't even have to boil rice. If you just put it in water and let it sit long enough, it'll cook. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that. Um, but and we and I would pour a, a can of soup in it and mix it together. It was pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. And the kids loved it. It would eat it. Yeah. So you take that now another night, maybe you killed a squirrel yeah. or a rabbit. Um, you take some meat and you, and you chop it up. You find some onions. You have a little garden that you grow because, you know, growing herbs and stuff is pretty easy, yeah. and, you know, and, and you chop it up. I mean, you, you can get inventive. And, and once you have this base of food, rice and beans, right, rice and beans, pot, you can really work with that and make um, filling relatively nutritious meals to feed your family. And it's comfort food. And, and that word comfort food comes from the depression. It is food that will actually comfort you. It'll feel good to have a full belly. Yeah. Now, I know it's fleeting because it's a lot of some of its empty carbs, but it, it, there's something about having that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you're going to burn those carbs off. You're going to get you're going to get vegetable protein, which a lot of scientists say is is, is as good or close to animal protein. Yeah. I, I'm a carnivore so i don't really without a doubt necessarily yeah. buy into that but i do like my rice and beans they don't miss me i'm carnivorous because <laughs> there's too many vegetarians out there right on well we'll, uh, we'll eat them the, you know the long, <laughs> the long pig they say it you're tastes doing like so good right up to there Donnie. <laughs> all right so the bucket how do i fill it all right so there's there's, there's more to it than just pouring in there, rice there is there's 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 some thought processes different thought processes and ways to do it some people take it they put it in the mylar bags and they hit, hit it with nitrogen. Yeah. And then they, they close and they seal the bag to take all the oxygen. Because the enemies... A lot of people don't have a clue what you're talking about. So we're going to let you know. However, mm -hmm. right. before we do, let's break for a commercial break. Sure. All right. That way YouTube can slap you right in the face with a commercial. We'll see you guys back in a minute. Anyway, so uh, let's get let's jump back into it. Right uh, we were, we're going to start talking buckets here. Yeah. So... One of the other and most popular ways to store food, and it's not necessarily a wrong way to do it, is using oxygen absorbers. Because, so the enemies of, of food are moisture and, and um, temperature, oxygen. Yeah. So with moisture and oxygen, all the bugs that are already in our food. And we're not talking cockroaches, we're talking microscopic. Microscopic yeah. bugs, worms. All the way up to cockroaches. All the way up to cockroaches. So, I mean, th that's just a reality that nobody, it, everybody knows it, nobody talks about it, is everything we eat has food or the remnants. Has bugs. When you have fish, yeah. has worms, whatever mm -hmm. in it. So it's in everything. So what we want to try to do is, is store this food in an oxygen-free environment and a moisture-free environment. Yeah. And that's not always as easy as, as it sounds. So... A lot of people use, and mylar bags are amazing for a multitude of yep. features and preparedness. Literally, we could do a whole video just on yes, mylar bags. On the and they're just strong, on the use of these. Um, they're durable, they hold up. Right, and you could actually just take your food and store it in that mylar and put it on a shelf as long as it was a, um, a clean environment without rats and stuff, which there are more, and mice in more places than people. People yeah, have them for yeah. years and don't even know. Yeah. But so, and then they put O2 absorbers in them and then they seal them up and then they store them, which is fine. However, we came up with a system that takes it to the next level and, and literally ensures that that food that, that you're storing is for up to 25 years. Because when I started on this venture, we found a guy who, who was using a similar system to this and he opened a bucket like we're going to do tonight that was about 20, 21 years old. And the, the rice was white. It wasn't yellowed. It, 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 was, it was edible. And we actually ate some of it, and it was fine. I was like, wow. So yeah. that's true storage. Yeah. I mean, if you keep it in a cool, dry environment, who knows how long. I mean, it's almost indefinite how long yeah. it'll store. A little bit of um, depletion of nutrition over a period of time, but very little. Yeah. Not enough to really affect anything. So, like I said, we're going to open one of the buckets I did 10 years ago. But so what we did in my genius friend I was talking about came up with a system to where we we take and we take the food, we sterilize a bucket, which we didn't do tonight. This is just for educational purposes. Yeah. We sterilize a bucket. We try to do it in a cleaner environment, like a garage. We clean it up. We try to get the dust out You're of the air. We're not doing it out in yeah. We're not doing it. We're not doing it in all the, the bugs and everything. In, in the okay. swamp, swamp cabbage heaven here. But um, we try to keep it. You know, you don't have to have clean room sterile, but you try to um, be as clean as you possibly can okay. within reason. 
So we take and we sterilize this bucket and we use a food grade bucket. Now a food grade bucket is indistinguishable from a traditional bucket, but it has a chemical composition that does not secrete into the food and yeah. will not affect or poison your food. You do not have to use food grade buckets. Because we're using the Mylar because bag. Because we're using a Mylar bag. However, if you can find them, they're great. And, and also buckets have different thicknesses. We always like to use the five mil thickness because it's stronger. You I mean, stack them tall, and you can stack yeah, them taller. Stack Bingo! Them tall. You see, it's a pretty quick study for a I've green beret. I've got a few but, buckets but in my house. But the, the five mil thick, and and you can find these at some stores. Give them away. You need to sterilize them. Um, you know, um, my girl works at Target. They give them away a lot of places, or you can buy them from container supply houses, which is where we bought ours. They have them in different colors. You can color code them. There's a multitude of things. But if you can, if you can swing it, five gallon pails bucket pail same yeah. thing um if you can if you can do that in food grade that's the best but it's not necessary if you just go to home depot and get them or lowe's or whatever that's uh, completely the ones fine. at lowe's food grade they have food grade okay sometimes yeah what about um generic size for the head are they all a yeah all the five size? gallon buckets are They're pretty much a, a, a generic size okay so we take and we take the food that we're going to uh, transfer into the 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 home and you, you wanted to show people real quick. We'll grab. Let's um, do. It. Let's do. Um, Which one you want to talk the, about? The one with the lid that's loose on top. All right. Just, All right. Just, is that loose? All right. It looks loose. All right. To me. So, so what this is, and we'll get into this, is 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 a gamma lid. Um, so when I started doing this years ago, these suckers were pretty pricey. Very now they, pricey. yeah, now they've come down to where they're actually really reasonable. This is one of the greatest things ever because it's a two-piece system. It has a, a ring or a lip on it that has a seal here, and we're, we actually take it. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use a um, and we're going to just hammer that down. Go ahead and pop that down. Put one hand on it and just kind of my network on the table. So so what Carl just did is he took this lip and he used a, a, a rubber mallet and he just he hammered it down on. So what that does is is it locks in and, it, and that seal locks up inside of the and lip on it. Airtight, and that creates tight. an airtight and watertight seal. Then on the lid that spins on, if you look, it actually has a, a gasket on it that's rubber. And when you, you slide that down and you don't need to really get it too tight because that'll actually not be good for it. So just get it to where it's relatively tight. Um, it screws on clockwise. Yeah, I'm we're yeah, lining yeah. it up knuckle Of mouse. course. Give me a little credit, dude. Give me a little credit. Little dragger. All right. All right, Here we go. So, so that's basically what it does. So we're gonna open this up now that we have on, um, put this lip on it. We're gonna grab one of our Mylar bags. So, and you can Stick buy these in, in bulk. They're very affordable. There's a lot of companies that sell them specifically for this application. Um, so what Carl's doing now, you would have your hands clean or maybe rubber gloves on really make that as sterile as possible and to spread that out as best you can i mean it doesn't have to be perfect and try the to food's gonna press it yeah out. the yeah. food's gonna, gonna press it out and you're gonna you're gonna have it you're gonna have it open like this so um what are we putting in so rice? what we're gonna do i just gotta I, again i don't even have enough rice to fill the bucket we're just just for show okay um so we're gonna take some rice and we're gonna we're gonna pour it into this bucket which would be a sterilized bucket then what we discovered is we added in, I want to set that down temporarily, yeah. set over there. What we discovered is there's a, there's a, a product or a substance you can buy called diatomaceous earth, but more importantly, food grade diatomaceous earth. So diatomaceous earth is basically uh, prehistoric organisms that, that deceased yeah. and floated down and then over millions of years were fossilized. If you look at diatoma, food grade diatomaceous earth through a microscope, it looks like just razor sharp shards. It's, it's almost silicon, it really is turned to silicon. And, and it's harmless for human consumption. It's not harmless to be breathed, breathed. in. But some people actually take it and they, they think it's good for the digest, digestive tract in order to do that. Um, it's used for a multitude of purposes. It's used for, for gardening. Um, it's used for food processing to keep bugs out of things. But one of the things that it does, it's an extremely fine powder. So you want to always try to wear a mask. This is the one time I'm going to recommend wearing a mask, um, other than standing by him too long. But um, dude, my fever broke early this morning. Okay. It's pretty good. <laughs> well, we should have made out, man. Just saying. But so what we're going to do? This food grade diatomaceous earth will not only 
coat all the food and we're going to douse it in it. And we're going to mix it, but it'll actually dry it out, which is really cool. And we take it, we, we put the, we're going to put the rice in the bucket, a little bit of food grade diatomaceous earth with our mask on. We're going to mix it. And just by a light mixing, it's, it's so fine that it'll, it will literally coat all the food, whether it's pasta. Now, that people right now are like, man, I don't want to be putting dirt all over my food. And Not this dirt. is on some food already. Hershey bars. Yeah, right? chocolate Candy bars. bars. It, you'll, you'll see a fine powder in many things that you eat. That's a lot of times food grade diatomaceous earth because it keeps things dry, right? So if a, we all know how easy a chocolate bar will melt, well, that keeps it dry yeah. and it keeps insects out of it because the food grade diatomaceous earth is going to serve a purpose initially as it's going to dry things out. We're going to take double the recommended O2 absorbers that, that, to, to do that. We, we just like to double up on them so that it makes a tighter seal. But if you take and you open this food like this rice we're going to open, you're in a crisis. All hell is breaking loose. You open up a bucket, right? You unscrew it, you take it, you open it, you know, you, you, you start dipping your food out. Well, you now inter introduce oxygen yeah. and moisture to it. And that's the key factors that allow these bugs to hatch, um, to get into it. But now it's got this extra protection of food grade diatomaceous earth that coats it. That's going to prevent these um, insects from hatching and, and eating and destroying your food. Um, bugs move through it and it literally cuts them up. The, the, destroys the them. The fine dust is just so Or, or sharp. dries out their husk. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and like, a, like people use it in gardens, not food grade, but regular grade. You could use a food grade, but it's more expensive. Uh, like, a, like a roach will walk through it and they breathe through their legs. It'll actually clog the pores and suffocate them. So it, it has a multitude of purposes in a crisis type situation. Okay. It, it behooves you to own. Um, you don't need a ton of it because it's so fine. Like just a dab will do you, literally. But it's a good thing to have and for a multitude of, of, of uses. Where do you get this at? Uh, Walmart, you got to uh, go to Amazon. Yeah, uh, uh, some, Not Lowe's or Home Depot. Sometimes they have it. You, uh, um, pet supply places or, or feed stores will have it sometimes. Really? People will use it in barns. Growing up okay. in Kentucky, yeah. grew up around horses, right. we'd put it around. So you'd um, have better you, luck. You can take, um, if you've got mites or something, you can, with a mask on, rub it on you. Okay. And it, I mean, it's a, you put it in your hair. It's, it's actually a pretty cool substance to have around. But the food grade, you can buy five pounds of it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And that's, a, you can do you 300 forever. buckets yeah. with that. I mean, it, it's, so I've got enough, I got a ton of it. But I'm just saying, that's something that we added to our pails. That was that extra step to guarantee that, that bugs were not going to infest this food. Yeah. As long as that Mylar bag was sealed, and we're going to show you how we to seal it properly. Um, and it's in a gamma lid. You could actually take a food grade bucket, pour rice in, put an O2 absorber in, and, and, and put that on it, and it would last a long, long time. Yeah. So we're armor plating our food, yeah. literally. Now, it'll float. So if there's a flood, it'll flip, and it's yeah. sealed properly, it'll float. You could bury it in the ground as long as it just not the bucket wasn't saturated in water. You could put it in an attic. I stored all mine in a, in a hot garage in Florida or in an attic in Florida. Yeah, you just stored this one in, in a, a trailer, hot trailer, hot trailer in the Florida sun yeah. for, and without a care in the world. Yeah. Where else can you have food that 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 is durable like that? I mean, you can throw it, toss it. If they're good buckets, they're going to hold up. And and since they're stackable, you literally can stack buckets wide and high. You you can go up to five or six high, depending. I always obviously put the heavy stuff, the salt, the yeah. rice but pastas and things are a little bit lighter. You can stack up too deep and have a, a, a year supply of food for, for five people quite easily for yeah. a bulk food. Then you supplement it with the cans and the very, you know, the, you have the cans with the rolls where you take one off and rotating it is very, very smart. Yeah. The people that invent those or build their own rotating cans. So when you go to the store or, or you go to a Sam's club or Costco yeah. or BJ's, you buy tons of cans and you, you put them. Then when you cook or do things, you pull it out and you always put the, the new ones at the top. Yeah. So you're literally rotating it. That's that's really plausible, um, smart food storage yeah, that's gonna be there. And and I'm talking a lot of food. One bucket of rice is like about 25 pounds, 27 pounds roughly. Yeah. I mean, think about when you, you, those of you who cook, how much two cups of rice makes. Mm -hmm. Like you could have four people make two cups of rice and have, and, and have full bellies. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get a lot from this. I've got, and I can I can post up at some point. I've got the nutritional stats okay. on how many calories and what's contained from when we had the business. But so we take the sterile bucket, which we're going to do. 
this one's obviously not sterilized. We're outside. We've got our O2 absorbers here, um, and what Same we're going to thing. You saw some uh, everywhere. They're they're every, everywhere. E everywhere. So now, where's the rice? Moisture at? absorbers versus oxygen absorbers. Well, they're O2 absorbers. Okay. I mean, the the diatomic. You don't really need the moisture absorbers. Okay. Um, so oxygen absorbers are just just iron. Yeah. Yeah. That's cut up, and they actually will pull all that moisture out of it. So it's it's a pretty simple thing. I want to reach down and grab any kind of rice as long as it's white rice. You know, there's there's better rices people like. Yeah, I like jasmine rice, not brown rice. Brown rice will go rancid. So we're just going to take this rice. We're going to open it up. It's already been opened. Got to sharpen that knife, brother. Dude, get out. Sharpen he's, that did knife. I mention he's also a knife guy? I was until I was humiliated. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna. I just sterilized it. I'm getting all the bugs out for you. Did you? There we go. Do you want to pee in it? We're gonna. Yeah, you're gonna pour rice into the bucket. Oh, dearie. Like prepper Julia Childs. <laughs> oh, caution to the wind. No. Oh. All right, we're gonna. Get one roach out of there. Roach. Oh, great. Well, that was not roach, man. All right, so we poured our rice in. That's 20 pounds of rice right there. Guys. Yeah, so let's dump. Let's get our DE. So All right. we're going to... Yeah, we're going to grab the day to measure the earth. All right, we're going to put our mask on. Yeah. We're going to take it. We're going to take a wee bit of day to measure the earth. A fine this, wee bit. There's 20 pounds of rice here. I mean, this there's, there's a, no real formula, so... This is a um, 25... Yeah. So if you look, I don't know if you can see that. That's just right. like a quarter of a scoop. Yeah. So it's a minuscule. I, I just eyeball it. I mean, you can measure it out if you wanted to. Putting too much doesn't bother it. No. Guys, it's it's taste free. So it when you take it and you cook it, it all boils to the top immediately. So and we're just going to take it and kind of spread it in here a little bit. This is gauche. No, it's slow, slow, slow. Just gonna go yeah, slow, it'll shoot out like crazy. Yeah, there you go. Slow, slow, slow. Go ahead. All right. Keep going. Slow, slow. Green Beret's got trigger figures, man. All right. Kill it. Let's pull it up. Now, this would be sterilized too. This is a concrete mixing bit. But you notice he doesn't use his concrete one for doing this. This is no, one no, you yeah. Just for so this. if you take this yeah. now and put your hand in it, right? Just, just reach in and yep. pull it. You'll see that the hand gets dirty. Right. Well, you see that it's coat. It's all yep. coated, and just that little bit that you did. It's such a fine powder that it's now coated everything yep. on there. So we'll take these off for a sec. Hate these things. So now, so now the food is mixed and coated with diatomaceous earth. Very, very simple. Now. I recommend when you're doing this that you buy a few hundred pounds of rice, um, dry, dried beans. Uh, I, I, yeah. It's obvious, but you got to tell people. You've got to tell yeah. people. Dried beans, uh, legumes, and and you you set it up and you and you this get like an assembly line. Yeah, you just get. It's kind of fun, really. It's not. It's not a bad thing. You get the kids to help you, and you set up, and then you start mixing and mixing and transferring. So what we're gonna do. Is we're going to take our other bucket that we, yeah, that we, that my lovely work. assistant has. All right, so we're gonna put our mask back on. Mm. Hold that open for me. Of course. So I'm gonna. And I'm going to pour the rice. Watch your eyes. You see it? Woo. Can I cook or can I cook? All right, so now. We take that and we pull on our seam a little bit. Probably shouldn't have taken my mask off. <laughs> it's listen, it's yeah. it's serious business, guys. This it, stuff it'll you damage your lungs. It, it really will, will. It will. It will tweak your lungs out. So we take it and we just kind of knead it, kind of push it down. And so this is only 20 pounds. Probably about another seven pounds that would get it. I think you get you get another ten easy in there. Roughly, easy. I mean, yeah. twenty seven is about what we normally okay. would would put into it. So you kind of push it down and get it set up and just kind of mess with it a little. 
All right, so, so we so got the bag that's ready. Got the, the bag that's ready. The last step, right at the last yeah. minute, we want to drop in those oxygen absorbers. That's right. So we're going to sacrifice this bag. Because okay. once you break the seal, there's no resealing it. So, but that's okay. We got we got a bunch of them. How many per gallon bag? Two. Two per and, gallon and I, and bag. I, I can give you all the stats so on exactly this is which ones. Three gallon bag? Three gallon bucket? Five gallon. Five gallon? Mm -hmm. This is not five gallons, brother. It is. You think that's five mm -hmm. gallons? I know it is. So, okay. your O2 absorbers, drop them in. So look in there, make sure it's down in the bottom. All right, so we've let our iron heat up. Uh, you can use iron. I've seen people use hair straighteners. Yeah, uh, I, basically anything and, hot and will iron work. iron right? works better. Yeah, it really works better on a two by six. We've inserted our, our double O2 absorbers. We folded it over. Now we're going to take our hot iron and we're going to. Oh, dude, that was sexy. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, that's. Yeah, you got to go slow because these are thick. You can get different Mylar bags too, but always go with the better ones. So see how nice, this is actually soothing. Watch your hand, I don't wanna hit you. As you see, the more I go back and forth, just take a little love and a little time with it because it's gonna be there for a long time. see on the edges and the top and the edges is really what your mm -hmm. your your most important seal is the other one is just the badlands get to get through you want to give it a try it's quite nice actually brother i can i can thou man talk a dial talk a dial me i got this you do got that mm. It's kind of fun. Man, man, I used to iron shirts in the army. Uh, yeah, a couple times. Right Brother, on. That's good enough. Yeah, man. that's we totally. We got a couple bag, a couple bubbles. It's okay. Not that's not nothing at all. all. Right. So now we've created a an airtight seal, um, roughly six inches, and so take our piece of wood off. Now what I do is is normally when the bag's got more rice in it, I let it sit for about 24 hours. You can you can do 48 to let those O2 absorbers go to work. And what it'll do is it'll suck that mylar down tight on that food. Remember how you used to get like the old eight o'clock coffee yeah, and yeah. stuff? It, was, oh, it, yeah, was, the tight it, it makes yeah. it tight like that, which is really cool. Yeah. So once you do that, and we're gonna accelerate it just for, cause this is educational. So once this is sucked down and tight on it, it'll, it'll kind of be in there a little more as we take it. Just kind of gently fold it down, push it down in there. And now this air, those O2 absorbers are gonna yeah, take, that's they're gonna take care of. Out. Right, then we take our we don't have a marker here, but then we would just take, actually there's, um, if you do stickers that you mark on, they're okay, but stickers will eventually come off if there's any moisture or anything on it. You gotta get a straight, straight seal. I noticed you went counterclockwise there a little bit. <laughs> just put that relatively tight, then write the date on it and what's inside of it. Tight. Yeah, tight. Oh so, so now my friends, we have just stored food that in theory will last 25 years. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum, minimum. So yeah. that's not hard. It's not yeah. rocket surgery. But if you don't know what it is, it might as well be a mountain. So that's why we wanted to bring this portion of it. I, I beg you to store food. I, I implore you. Because what happened when I, when I first did my first round of food storage, I did about 15, 15 buckets roughly. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I did the, the buckets and we cleaned up and everything. And then later I had them in my garage and a little later I went out and I just kind of, just kind of stared at it. And I just, the, the thought process in my head, this, this sense of well being came over me that knowing that no matter what comes or what happens, I can feed my family. I can feed my kids. I can, I can help my neighbors. Um, I can barter. What do you think, um, you know, half a pound of rice will be worth in a, in a crisis off the grid situation like Chris writes about and talks about. I mean, people will give up their Rolex watches for a bag of rice if they're starving. Yeah. I mean, this, this is true wealth. And that's what my friend taught me. He goes, you want to talk about wealth? This is true wealth because everybody has to eat. And if you have food now, 
you can take it, store it at your, your place, or you can do like I do, and people that have been in this game a long time, is you take some of it and you store it at, a, at another place. Yeah. And you take some more and you maybe hide it somewhere. And you take some more and you store it at another place. So any place can get overrun. Guys, remember, uh, if you hiding, you're talking about setting up a cache somewhere. Mm -hmm. We actually have a whole video on do, doing the whole cache from not just boxing it up, but all the way to doing the cash report where you had it, height, site selection, all that. You can find that video on our video archive. It, um, like he was mentioning, store food, but understand if you store nine months of food for your family, uh, three more months after that, you're you're dead. That's all you have, right? So, because uh, you're only gonna, you're only gonna be able to last a little bit past that. So. Uh, like Chris was saying uh, in one of our other videos, literally having this is a great head start, right? But you've still got to be able to do the gardening and everything Eventually, else. Eventually, right. It's, exactly. it's a stopgap. But you can only garden so much stuff. I can't grow coffee in Kentucky, right? Uh, unless you've got dairy cows, it's going to be hard for you to ship milk to put on your cereal, all right? So <laughs> store bulk of the things that you can't grow yourself, that you can't come up with yourself. And n now that nine months of food that you have, you're now using it to supplement what you're making yourself. Correct. And you're now two years, three years, four years. And uh, this is awesome. And now you have the ability to make a, a menu, a variety of meals, because you have the foundational pizzas for it. it this is a stopgap, but understand that for not a ton of money, you can store a, a ton of food. Yeah. I mean, literally, I, at some point, I had 2.4 metric tons of food stored. I, I moved some around. I gave some away. We could, well, I just did, you know what? Every few months, every 90 days, every I would just get a hair, and I would go out, and, and they would have a sale. I'd go to Restaurant Depot yeah. and buy, you know, 200-pound bags of rice. Yeah. And, and the O2 absorbers and the Mylar bags, you can buy a, a hundred buy, of them for yeah. next to nothing. Yep. The O2 absorbers are cheap. The diatomaceous earth is cheap. The buckets are pretty cheap. Now... Some other things you can do besides storing your food, obviously, these can be used for toilets. Yeah. You can take um, personal hygiene um, things that are things that you want to create a, a oxygen and moisture free environment for ammo. Mm -hmm. People don't talk. I mean, ammo cans are great, but why not put ammo in my and store? Yeah. I mean, you talk about pristine when it comes out. I mean, think about the things that you can store using the system. And it, you don't have to just use these. They make uh, food grade um uh, barrels, uh, yeah. 30, uh, 25 pound, 35 pound, and 55 pound drums. So there's, and we had some other, we'll do a video on an idea that I had, and I've been working with Chris on, we call the land life raft using a 55 gallon drum, um, which is pretty cool. So I don't know, I don't know if Chris wants, More me, to follow Chris wants on me to talk one. about that we're or not. not so. gonna, we're not going to, a little spoiler alert. Yeah, a little spoiler, but we've got some great ideas, and this is from years of experience, and this is from countless hours of research, talking to people. If you wanna if you wanna understand how to survive in a situation and who survives, read. Yeah, do, exactly. do audible. Listen to stories of survival. Listen to like Selko that Chris told you about, the guy mm -hmm. from from Bosnia, the uh, go back to, you know, when Stalin he starved he starved millions of death. They starved. He they literally took the food. Yeah. Right? Or if they had several hundreds of these hidden in, in a location yeah. or spread out. I mean I'm just saying this is, this is the hardest to get resource in a crisis. Warlords, wait, you know when they always they bring the food shipments yeah, to Africa. The, um, what do they do? What, yeah. what happens? They uh, the warlords immediately seized right. it, and the UN just Why? stood there and let them do it. Why they do power. that? Power, power over the people. Right. It's not just the guns. Yep. Right. It's this. All right. Now I got see the six people in the back that are doubting. They're shaking their heads. They don't. Those six people out out of everybody. They don't really believe that this stuff would last that long. Let's you want to bust open. Let's show them. Now you, how many metric tons? 2.4. All right, now this Back one, that's day. why you don't mind opening this one. No, I don't mind. I'm going to shake Now you see it's kind of beat up. off the top. Yep. That bucket's been around. Well, most of them have, and I just scribbled on. This one was stored, this is rice, in uh, October of 2011. October 2011. Now the air, now, this wasn't stored in a cool place. Wasn't stored out of the sun. You got this out of that freaking trailer. Ass pit garage in Florida. 
right. where the humidity, um, I mean, and then the trailer. Heat and everything. Guys, I want this to sink in. Literally, that's, it's literally been open, like expanded, contract, expanded so much that that lid, for the people that well, are trying to just that. rely. Did that you? Too. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say, brother, that. Well, I didn't want it to be too tight, tight when we tried to open it because, you know. All right. Okay. All right. So you loosen that. It's all right. So, so you can see where we did the seal. Yep. Right? 10 years old. That one's prettier than the one we just did. did. Yeah, well, we, we were pretty good at it. Well, I got to use my knife because yeah. yours is dull as shit, I'll give brother. You the honor. Make sure it's well, our answer. It's almost too sharp. Wow. How are we? All right, we got our oxygen, the camera could see oxygen absorbers. Yeah. All right. Any wow. odor? Any smell? No. no. It's got, uh, Rice. You, can see the, you see the... Diatomaceous yeah, earth. The yeah. earth right there. And All right, guys, air. that's 10 years, and it's as though we just put it in the bucket. Uh, they say 25 years, but I hear about them opening old mountain house cans 50 years later. Uh, brother, this stuff. I mean, this is perfect. This is. Can you imagine how long it would keep if you kept it in a cool, dry place? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, literally, yeah. I, and I've thrown these buckets around, thrown them in trailers, moved them. I mean, think about that. That 10 years old right now. And it's perfect. I mean, I, I'm going to do another one at you know at 15. I mean, I'm it's it's and it, it's fresh. It, there's yeah. no yellowing of it. Um, you know, it's like you said, it doesn't stick together. That diatomaceous earth is the key. And we're, uh, as far as I know, we're the only ones that ever do that. I'm not All saying right, so. It was a, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go. We're going to go boil a couple cups of this and. As and eat it. What's the earth going to do as soon as we? Well, we put, put we, it in we'll water. Get the water and we put it in. As it's boiling, it'll 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 boil up to the top, and it and makes like a like a frothy, off. foamy yeah. kind of on the, on the top. You just scrape it off. I mean, you could eat it; it it won't hurt it's you. Not gonna hurt you. Yeah, it's just you know nobody wants. It's not dirt. It's 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 fossil fossilized. It's like silicon. Yeah. You know, in fact, it might not be bad for you in an environment where there's maybe dysentery or you know um, so like kinds you said, of bugs, people unsanitary. Take it, A lot uh, of people yeah. swear that if they take yeah. this, it'll clean out their bowels, and you know. It, it kind of makes sense a little bit. I mean, since it's so fine yeah. and you've got these things cleaning out your bowel tract. I know it's not sexy to talk about, but cleaning out that There's environment. There's nothing sexy about you at all, Don. That, that remains to be seen. <laughs> all right, Jets. Uh, so we're going to go boil some of this stuff for you. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to plug it in while we were just talking about it. Uh, guys, uh, have your shelf stable comfort foods all right have your mres uh i i am a big believer in mountain house or, or let me rephrase that big believer in freeze-dried foods for saving weight for camping hunting going up on the mountain doing yeah, stuff like compare that compare that to um even even when you take yeah, these apart wise, yeah yeah i mean there's a you can pack four of these on, on yep. what an mre does comfort foods that uh, the the snacks and the frozen foods and everything that's fine all your canned goods not saying don't do that learn how to can uh, vegetables all that stuff but the reality is long-term bulk beans and rice and guys you add that to everything else Flour. and you can drag out that menu and keep that family afloat for a long time Donnie, thank you so much for your time, that was brother. My pleasure. This is and, and I've got uh, more stuff we can cover on the food yeah. storage Without thing a doubt. A later on. You'll see so. more of Donnie. You'll see more of Chris Weatherman and the whole Angry American Incorporated team. These guys are awesome. They are subject matter experts, and that's why they're here with us on Tactical Rifleman. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. Carl, head in the game, Carl. <laughs> Heather, make sure you put that in Heather, the uh, proper yeah, folder if you know Heather, what I'm saying. You know, I'm just messing with you. All right, here we go. We